Joined by uh, Coach Gate. If you guys want to raise your hand, we will uh, come around and get your questions in. Nick, you can lead us off. Hey, Coach, I want to first start by talking about the goalies, which I'm sure you've gotten a lot of question, questions about the past few weeks. But specifically with Bobby Gavin, just talk about um, how he's done transitioning from Virginia to here. And you know, he's only been with the program for a month or two, just while you've seen out there in practice. Well, I, I, I pulled him aside, chatted with him a bit uh, the other day, and asked how, how those exact questions. How's your transition? How do you school? How's everything? And he says he absolutely loves everything and everything's going great. And, you know, the way he's playing on the field, he seems pretty comfortable and he seems that, uh, you know, a regular part of the team at this point. So uh, we're happy with his uh, move to Syracuse and um, we'll certainly uh, use him this year for sure. Did, did he say he likes the snow too? Uh, <laughs> we didn't really talk about the snow. We never practiced it, so we don't. I never. It never really came up. But uh, he he likes the school. He likes the teammates. He, he's enjoying the team. So I think he's in a pretty good spot right now. Roshan and then Andrew. Roshan and then Andrew. Um, Coach, I'm curious about TD Erlin's role on the staff. And I know you guys have him as a volunteer assistant. Does that does he, does he have a daily role working with with Jacob Falp and the other faceoff guys? Um. Well, we're going to address them, actually. And, uh, have, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> we would love to address them. But, uh, you know, volunteers are, are tough to get full time. And, and, you know, we were lucky to get him for the time we do, uh, typically three days a week. Um, and he, he does, you know, work with those guys almost every day through through you know phone calls and game planning practice planning so he he works with them every day he's just not in person every day so um you know we're, we're happy with the direction that's heading right now but you know the, the real changes and the real opportunities come when we start playing games right of course I, I guess like jacob had a bit of an up and down year last year you know what have you seen from him maybe even just in terms of confidence and, and the way he's playing obviously with a guy like td next to him well, I, I think the fact that he gets to, to work with TD and train with him a bit, and it's really built his confidence, and, and he is playing at a pretty high level right now. So um, we just want to get him out in the field, give him an opportunity to do what he does, and, and hopefully he'll, he'll have a great year. And I think, you know, the, the difference from last year to this year will be the coaching and the opportunity. How do you rebound? Okay, that move's not working. What move will work? And to have TD there doing that would be great, great for him. Andrew? Uh, hi, Coach. Sticking with the face-offs, uh, you know, in years past, uh, Jacob has kind of alternated with Danny, and, and with Danny gone, I'm curious, do you kind of plan on using, like, the, a one-two kind of punch there, riding with the hot hand? Like, how do you kind of see that position unfolding, or do you just kind of want to ride Jacob uh, for, the, for the, you know, whole thing? Um, you know, Jacob's our guy right now, and I think I think more than not we'll we'll ride him and see how he does. And and you know we we have a couple other guys that are ready to to give him a break and give him and give and take some opportunities if we need to. But uh, much like you said, I think that Fop's our guy, and and we're gonna go with him. Uh, and then to, just to follow up uh, with, about Griffin Cook, um, Owen just kind of mentioned how, how impressive he has been in the scrimmages. Uh, and, you know, he's somebody who's bounced around between attack and midfield the last you know few years. How do you kind of see him settling into the uh, into the offense, and what's maybe impressed you most about his skills? His skill set. Well, he's definitely one of our, our more cerebral players that uh, understands the, what we're trying to do on the offensive end, and he's got a great skill set to make things happen. So. You know, we've been trying to build his confidence and improve on his shooting and, and scoring opportunities. And he's playing with a lot of confidence right now, and we're hoping that will continue. He's uh, definitely been one of the bright lights through the preseason, and we're hoping he can step up and have a breakout year. Thank you. Alex and then Cameron. Hey, Coach. Um, yeah, I know, I know you, talk, you touched on – a little bit of reshuffling um, in the past, uh, specifically with um, with Owen's injury, moving Tucker up to the um, attack. Um, but specifically looking at the midfield, I guess, what should we expect uh, 
from the midfield strategy and any changes um, regarding the midfield heading into the Holy Cross game? Uh, I, I think you're going to see, you know, the Holy Cross game, you're going to see a, a pretty similar uh, opportunity to, to what we did a lot. We've really been focused on, on executing our offense and using the midfields to create and draw slides and, and um, we're going to continue that. And I think it, it's going to be a good opportunity for some young players to get some chances to play. You know, uh, Corsi and Cordes, two freshmen, will get some, some run um, probably on the second line. And um, that'll give them a chance to, to see what they're made of and, and give them an opportunity to get their feet wet in uh, Division One lacrosse. So it, it's going to be a, a nice mix of players. And, and we kind of look at it as, as you know, attack mids is really everybody's offense and everybody has the opportunity and, and we'll make adjustments is, you know, to how teams play. And, and that's kind of our, our model this year is adjust our play to, to give ourselves the best opportunity for success on the O end. Yeah, and, you know, has anybody, you know, surprised you throughout the preseason? Any any dark horses uh, heading, in, heading into the O for uh, you know, again, prob uh, probably Griffin Cook's been you know, one of the brighter spots. I, th I think his confidence level is pretty high right now, and we're hoping that continues. And then, you know, when young guys get an opportunity, if they, if good things happen, they'll build their confidence, and you know, they'll they'll be able to provide some valuable minutes for us. So, we'll see. Cameron. Coach, when you look at this group as a whole and this program and knowing that you're not a new face to the program, but you are in this new role, what are you specifically trying to bring to this program? Well, you know, we're trying to create team chemistry right now. That's that's the key. and Develop roles and have people excel at those roles that they're given and, and buy into all the team concepts that we're putting in and, and you know, the only way this team's going to have success this year is if everybody does their job and they do it well and they communicate and they work together. You know, we're, we're not going to be a team of, you know, ridiculous superstars on offense or defense that, that make it easy, you know, for coaching. It's going to be more of a team effort top to bottom. You're going to see the ball distributed to a lot of offensive players. You're going to see some great team defense and and we gotta we gotta have success in all the different areas of the game to, for our team to win. I think this year. Uh, so I was chatting with one of your former teammates, Pat McCabe, a couple a couple of days ago. He says hello, by the way. Oh yeah. And uh, he uh, he told me that there's something about you. He has that that you have a competitive edge when it comes to the game of lacrosse as a whole. Uh, I'm curious to know where that came from and how you're going to try to instill it in this program this year. You know, a competitive edge, I, I, you know, what, what I think I bring is just, you know, lessons from the past, you know, my experiences and, and my coaching experiences, all the coaches that I played for, you know, I rely on all of that to evaluate the, the team that we have and make adjustments based on the personnel. And, and, you know, that's what I, I, I told John Wildhack when I took the job. You got to evaluate the talent and you got to have game plans that fit the talent that you have. And, and you know, that's what I focus on. And, and combine that, I think we got a great coaching staff that knows how to teach the different aspects of the game. And that's what we're really focused on is teaching these players why and how they do things and what will make them successful. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Looks like we only have one more hand raise. We'll uh, wrap it up with Dean. Up to oh, Dean and then Nate. Sorry, guys. And Gary, Owen said that the biggest difference between the first scrimmage and the second was that the team was flat in the first and, and not as much energy, and they, they were more lively in the second. I guess how do you just make sure that the team is, is ready to go, especially in the first game against a, a non-conference opponent like Holy Cross? Well, we've been talking a lot about it. You know, we've been uh, – drawing on the comparisons to the weeks prior, and we've been working on our uh, energy and enthusiasm and effort, you know, throughout the week. And, you know, our philosophy is kind of how you practice during the week is how you're gonna play. And, 
you know, we're expecting a lot of these guys. We got them working very hard, and and hopefully we'll see that same effort on the game, and and they'll they'll be well prepared. So, just a matter of being energized, excited, and and remembering what they've been taught. Do you have an idea of who's going to be starting on Saturday in, in net? And if so, uh, I I think we're going to meet probably after this and kind of finalize that and decide when we're going to talk to the goalies. We haven't talked to them yet to, to name a starter or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we'll know that probably by Friday and, and make sure we, we let the goalies know before anybody else and go from there. All right, Nate, last question. Uh, yeah, just to kind of follow up on that, Gary, how many position battles would you say – you had in the in the preseason and did did they resolve themselves or are you kind of going into this opener really unsure what you have i i think we have an idea of what we have it, it's still you know there's a difference between practice and playing games and you know so guys will get opportunities and we'll see how and what they do with those opportunities you know do they excel do they forget what they were supposed to be doing. Do they play with energy? There's going to be a lot of things to be evaluated on. But I, I think, you know, for this first game, you're going to see kids get opportunities and hopefully they step up to the challenge.